What's up, this is Steven from Digital Media Pocket Knife giving you the tools you need to get the job done. Today I wanna to talk to you about how to use Google's free web-based application to create Word documents, and that's Google Docs. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, Google offers several cloud-based applications, meaning you don't have to install anything to your computer, that you can log into and create Word documents, spreadsheets, and presentations without paying a single dime and it's absolutely legal and free and all that good stuff. Specifically in this video, we're gonna cover how to use Google Docs, which is your word processing application, where to find the most commonly used features and how to navigate and all that good stuff. So let's dive right in. The first thing that you wanna do in order to get to Google Docs is you wanna sign into your Google account. As you can see here, I've got my Gmail screen open and in the upper right corner, we're gonna click on this apps button and we're gonna click on our drive. This is gonna open Google Drive. I go over that in a previous video. I'll put a link to that video in the description. And once we're ready to create our document, what we're gonna do is click on New and then click Google Docs. And this is gonna basically create the first document that we can save into Google. This is a word processing document. Operates very similarly to Microsoft Word. Can I say that right? Similarly, there we go. And I want to cover kind of the basics and some of the common features that you find in Microsoft Word and show you where you can find them in Google Docs. The first thing that you want to do when you open this document is give it a title. Up here in the upper left corner, all documents get defaulted with the untitled document default title. Uh, we can name this document test document, name it whatever we want. Boom. So this document cool thing about Google Docs and all the applications in the Google Drive is that they automatically save. You don't have to worry about going to file and save. Actually, that option doesn't even exist. Google automatically saves your changes in Drive. Even if you're kicked offline, it'll save your changes offline. And once you're back online, Google will upload your changes to their web platform. So if that is a little confusing, what, what that basically means is you don't ever have to worry about going file, save. Google is automatically going to save it for you, which is another reason why I love Google. First thing that we're going to want to look at is the uh, format menu and the format toolbar. So the easiest way to format your document is with this formatting toolbar. So I'm going to first type some test text here. Purposefully did this for features. You see how uh, features is misspelled and incorrect. Gave it a nice red underline to let us know that there is a typo here. What's cool is you can right click and then use their suggested correction. So I can click features and boom. At that point, the word is corrected. A couple other cool things you can do is very simple stuff. Highlight a bit of text and then click bold. You can bold certain words, italics. Um, if I wanted to highlight this entire sentence um, right here for this text color. If I click this drop down arrow, it's going to give me the option of changing the actual text color, which I don't want to do. It's defaulted to black. I actually want to click on this highlight and select the yellow. And then that highlights the entire sentence. If I just wanted to do one word, I could highlight the one word and then give it a different highlight color. But let's say I want to change the text color. We're going to change it to blue and that changes that word to blue. Some of the other things on this menu are a little self-explanatory. I'm gonna break this up into two lines. If I wanted to justify this center, I'm gonna click that center button, boom. Spacing, I wanna highlight all the text in the document and this menu right here, line spacing, if I click that down arrow, we get the choice to do single spacing, the defaulted 1.15 spacing, I can do a line and a half of spacing and I can also do double spacing. For those of you writing papers that require double spacing, this is where you'll do it. Click on double and Google automatically updates the spacing for you. You can also change the font over here on the font menu. You get all these different choices. They give you a nice selection of choices. And if I wanted to change the size, I could select one of their predefined sizes or type in a custom size here. Let's do 76. We don't see it in that menu, but if we hit enter, it changes the font size to 76. Let's get this down to something a little bit more manageable. We also have some options underneath this format menu. A lot of similar things that we see on the format bar, but we also have some things that we don't see right away. So if I click on test, if I highlight this, format strike through, we get to that nice little strike through with our text. There are some other cool things in the insert menu that will let you format the document as a whole. So if I click on the end of this first sentence here and I go to insert and I wanna insert a page break, I can insert a page break so that the next sentence begins on the next page. We're gonna control Z that real quick. I can also insert images into my documents. 
On my other monitor, I have an image already ready for inserting into here. So if I actually just click from the Finder window and drag it into the document, it'll automatically put that picture in here. It actually gave it the same formatting as all the text in this image. So if I wanted to get rid of that, I can actually highlight that line and remove the highlight, click None, and it get rid gets rid of the highlight on the image. Put that on a separate line, and that's how you insert images. You can also go to the insert menu and click on image. It'll open up a window saying which image do you want to put in this document. You select the image and it'll go right in the document where you have your cursor. You can also use the insert menu to add links to your document. So let's say I wanted this text link to link to a website. If I click on link, which is also command K or control K if you're using a Windows computer, if I click on that, this is the text up here that is reading on our document and then down below is the link. So if I actually put google.com, hit enter or click apply, it'll actually give a link to that piece of text. So if my cursor is in this bit of text and I click on the link that it provides, then a new tab is gonna open and it'll actually go to that website, pretty cool. There are some other cool things in the insert menu. You can insert charts, tables. If you wanted to insert a table, you could define it right here. How many columns, how many rows, and it'll put it right in the document for you. The last thing in the insert menu that I wanna go over is the header and footer. So if you click on insert, there's the header option and the footer option. You click header, the document's automatically gonna go to the header. So up here I can type in whatever custom text I want, click out of the header, and the header is saved. And that's it with the insert menu. Now if we look at the tools menu, Docs has some cool features here. If I wanted to do some more spell check, I can actually click on the spelling option. Let's misspell a word here, word. Apparently word is a word, so let's do, um, F-E-T-A-U-R-E -E again, for lack, of a, for lack of another word. So we see that the word is incorrect. Google lets us know that with the red underline. If we click on spelling, Google is automatically gonna ask us, hey, do you wanna change this misspelled word with the correct spelling of this word? We click change, bam, it's automatically gonna change. We can also ask Google to give us a word count. So again, in the tools menu, if we click on word count, it's gonna give us a count of all the words within this document. We see we have 20 words in this document. If we actually just wanted to highlight a paragraph and ask Google to tell us how many words are in that paragraph, we can highlight the paragraph, click on word count, and we'll see that there are four words out of 20 in the entire document. So this is actually a very cool feature of Google Docs. So those are some of the basics in a nutshell. Now, what do you do when you wanna share this document or you wanna download it, or you wanna see previous versions of the document? Google has all those features built in. So if we go to the file menu, and let's say we want to share this document. First option up here is share. Google's going to give us a pop-up saying, hey, who do you want to actually share this with? Now what we can do is we can begin typing in an email. And if that contact is in our address book, if we hit the tab button, then Google's automatically going to recognize that contact and add them to the list of people to share this document with. Once we click send, Google will send an invitation to all the people specified saying, hey, someone's trying to share a document with you and they have the opportunity to see the document or to ignore you if they choose to. If you wanna share something with somebody relatively quickly, let's say you want to share a link to this document in Facebook Messenger, you can actually click Get Shareable Link. That's gonna be a quick way for you to get a link that you can copy if you click this Copy Link button and paste into Messenger or through text to send to the person that you actually wanna have access to this document, it's very cool. You can also choose the type of permission you want them to have. So. If you only want them to see the document and not be able to edit it, you can keep this as can view. If you want them to have access to write to the document and edit it, click this little arrow drop down and you can click can edit. You'll need to click copy link again in order to share the right version of this document. If you kept the previous version of the link, they would only have view rights. So make sure that after you update the permissions that you want them to have, you click on copy link and it'll copy the correct link. Google also gives you the option to download documents right from the Docs application. So if you click on file and click download as, Google gives you the option. You can download this as a Word document, a PDF document, or any of the other various types that you see here. If you wanna see revisions that you've made to this document, let's say it's been passed around and people have made changes to this document, and you wanna see what changes have been made along the way, and maybe possibly revert to a previous version of this document. If you click on see revision history, it's gonna open up a history of this document we see here on the right hand side. The top item is the most recent version of this document. If you click any of the options below, here we only have one, this document is pretty new. It's gonna show us what this document looked like in an earlier version. 
this is what it looked like when we first started to create this document. There was nothing there. We were working with a blank canvas. I don't want to restore this version, but if you did, you would click this restore this revision option and it would revert to this version of the document. To go back, we're going to click this back arrow in the upper left and we're back to our document. If we decide, man, this document isn't very good. I kind of want to get rid of it. It's trash. Let's just move it to the trash. If we go to file, move to trash, we get the option to actually dump this document. Google asks us to confirm whether or not we want to dump this document or not. We can choose to go to the docs home screen, which keeps this document in the trash, or we can click this take out of trash and then we're back to editing the document. And those are really the basic most used features of Google Docs. If you want to dive in a little bit further, shoot me a comment below and I'll see if I can explain some of the more advanced features or just different features of Google Docs. If we want to go back and see maybe a list of all of the documents that we have, what we can actually do is click on this button up here in the upper left corner. And this is going to take us to the Docs home screen where we're going to see all of the documents that we have in our Google Drive. This is simply a list of all the Word documents that we've created using Google Docs. One other thing that's really cool about Google Docs is they offer us some templates up top here. So if we wanted to create a resume, a letterhead, a cover letter, or maybe a project proposal, Google gives us these nice templates that we can start from so we're not always starting from scratch. Maybe this is a good starting point for you if you need some help with inspiration and how you want your documents to look. You can go off these templates exactly or just use it again as a launching point for how you want your specific document to look. And that's it, that's Docs in a nutshell. If you have questions on how to use some of these features, or maybe there are features that other word processors have that you wanna know if Google Docs actually has it, leave me a comment so I can look into it and get back to you and let you know if Google Docs will be the right solution for you. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Like this video if you like it. Keep the creative juices flowing by subscribing to this channel. Remember, I try to release at least one video a week to help keep your skills sharp. If you have any questions on Google Docs, again, leave me a comment below. Now, I want you to take this information, focus, and go do something productive. So now that you know how to use this application, check out below for any of the other two applications as we dive deeper and you can find the most common features, how to create good looking documents, and all that fun stuff. I'll wait. You're there. Waiting for you to click. Toodles.